Get Up Nation. My name is Ben Biddick. I am the creator and host of the Get Up Nation podcast, where I serve individuals, organizations, and societies to develop and sustain resilience and perseverance. I'm the co-author of Get Up, The Art of Perseverance, with former Major League Baseball player and CEO of Ruron Living, Adam Greenberg. The Get Up Nation podcast is brought to you in partnership with GotYourSixCoffee.com, where Navy veteran Eric Hadley is committed to serving first responders, veterans, and their families through a variety of nonprofit organizations. No stranger to adversity, Eric has fused the necessity of coffee with his passion for public service. You're already purchasing coffee. Why not empower your coffee with purpose? Why not purchase coffee that not only has your six, but also has the backs of those who don a uniform of service for our communities and great country. Learn more about Eric and his freshly roasted award-winning coffee at gotyoursixcoffee.com. Also coming out in July 2019 from Penguin Random House is a book I had the honor of writing the foreword for called Warrior's Book of Virtues, a field manual for living your best life. Combat veterans Nick Bennis, Matt Bloom, and Buzz Bryan share how lessons they learned during their service can help empower you into a life of deep and lasting virtue no matter the obstacles you face. Available now for pre-order at the links below. Welcome to this episode of the Get Up Nation podcast. Recently, I had the honor and privilege of speaking with Darcy Edwards. Darcy is the founder and principal broker of EdwardsRealtyTrust.com in Hillsboro, Oregon. Edwards Realty Trust is a boutique real estate firm serving buyers, sellers, and investors in Washington, Columbia, and Yamhill counties. Darcy has lived in western Washington County her entire life, creating an unsurpassed knowledge of the area, its industries, and culture. Her experience in both agriculture and marketing help her clients get the most out of their land investments, especially when paired with Darcy's deep network of community business leaders in many different industries that help her clients find their perfect home, winery, or investment opportunity. I look forward to sharing with Get Up Nation Darcy Edwards, heart for service, relentless drive for success, and how she makes one of the most stressful decisions families can make into fun, desperation-free transitions. Darcy, welcome to Get Up Nation. Oh, thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here today. Thank you. Absolutely. Tell me about where you grew up and why you love living where you do. So I grew up in a little town in Oregon, western Washington County called Banks, Oregon. Grew up there, went to high school there, and I'm just proud of it. It's a great little town outside of Hillsboro, and we just won a triple crown. So state football, state basketball, and state baseball. Amazing. Yeah. It's the first time it's been done in a long time. Two schools have ever done it. So those are the kinds of things that I like about it. We're very community-oriented, knit together. If someone's suffering, we all pitch in to help them. And we all know where each other's kids are. That kind of small-town feel. But on Highway 26, so we can get into Portland, Hillsboro, whatever, pretty quickly. And I just love being out there. You work in the city. You go home to the country. You have a multifaceted background that merges powerfully into an ability to help your clients succeed as they purchase or sell real estate. You have experience in finance, marketing, agriculture, and tech. Will you share with us some of your accomplishments in other sectors that have contributed to your success in real estate? I was a little bit of a, I didn't know what I wanted to be when I grew up kind of thing. And I was a mom and my sister gave me an opportunity to work at the Hillsborough Chamber. And so I was their volunteer. She actually just said, come in here and help me. So I did that for a while. And I had worked in high tech. I'd done all these other jobs. I was a mom. I had adopted two children. Just came out of a long legal battle with that. And I needed something kind of easy to do to get my mind off all of that garbage I went through. So that was a perfect place for me to be. I get to go and talk to other businesses. And I actually learned... You know, I had to put on classes for networking and learn how to do business. So I got my first taste of that there. And then during that time, it was the downturn, right? And my husband's family actually came from real estate. And I asked him, I'm like, hey, you know, do you think I should do real estate? And he goes, oh, my gosh, you're going to hate it. It's terrible. <laughs> it's every weekend. So like in 2011, 2010, he's like, oh, my gosh, you need to do this now. You know, at the bottom of this downturn. And it hadn't really quite turned around yet. It was still recalling a little bit. And so went through and got training and started my career in real estate, part time doing the chamber as well. So I was their person that went out and got memberships 
for the chamber, so membership coordinator. So I think what it was. And just making cold calls, knocking on doors, being able to learn that fun skill of cold <laughs> calling during that time. And that's very humbling. If you can um, get through uh, cold calling and knocking on businesses' doors, you can get through pretty much anything. <laughs> so then you transitioned into getting people into homes. People's homes are sacred places. It's where they eat together. They gather in their kitchens where sauces simmer, where couples discuss yeah. their stresses and teach their children valuable life lessons. They return there to reconnect. When you meet a new client, tell me about the process you undergo to first understand what is ideal for them and how you deliver them into the space they wind up calling home. So I start really by listening and asking questions. I deal a lot with a lot of people coming from all over the country and sometimes all over the world. We're in a high-tech area. So I have to be able to figure out where they want to be pretty fast. And so I ask a ton of questions about their lifestyle, not necessarily what they like in a house. That comes later. Mm. I just want to know about them. You know, are kids in sports? What kind of sports do they play? Do you have hobbies? Do you like to garden? Do you care about noise? Do you not care about noise? Tell me about where you're at now. What do you love about it? What do you not love about it? So I think in any business, but especially in real estate, it's listening first and asking questions and just asking people a myriad of questions, not rapid fire, but you know, over time talking to them and finding out what their heart's desire is and try to meet that expectation as best you can. It's people driven. It's servant leadership in a sense. You're finding out in an intimate way what delights them, what lights them up, and then matching that with your expertise of that community. You've lived in Western Washington County your entire life. So how does that depth of your knowledge of the area and the strength of your network in this area translate to finding that perfect home for your clients or creating a plan of action for their real estate goals so they can make wise decisions with their money and be satisfied with that purchase. Um, it sounds like you set it up by gaining an intimate understanding of who they are. Absolutely. And finding out what their drivers are, exactly how you said that, finding out what lights them up on fire. And I tell people, I go, yeah, I'm a native Oregonian. And they'll go, oh, what part of Oregon do you specialize in? And I go, yeah, the state. I represent the state. Like, I know the state very well. I sold houses to people in Astoria and way out on the other side of the east side of Portland and Hillsboro and Yamhill County and St. Helens all over. And what I actually love about that is I get to see the state again. I get to see these places that I may have never been to that I've lived here my whole life and never seen. So I have a very, what I would call, a luxurious job of being able to see the state in a different way, not as a tourist, but like how's the best way to get them where they want to be and get them here. If they're in a winter storm, how are they going to get out of this area? Or they want a little bit of land. They don't want to be in downtown Portland. How are we going to make that happen for them? And what community works with that? So I'm very blessed and I am very grateful <laughs> that I get to drive and just find places for people all over our state. It's pretty fabulous. We have some incredible places. That's the fun part of that. Now, the connection side, because I was so connected <laughs> with the community here, it expands out so far because of where people come from. And I make connections with people at Nike and Intel and all over. I have a great network to help my clients get their stuff done. So it's not just me and who I know, but the people that I network with can get their roof done. They can get all those things done. Oh, you need a job at whatever. I know somebody there, or I don't know somebody at that one, but this person over here knows the hiring manager there. Why don't I connect you with her? I love being able to do that. I love what I call being a matchmaker, mm. where I get to match up people with connections. I think people forget. It's a gift when you're able to say to somebody, oh, I know somebody that works there. Why don't I connect you? Mm. And it was like an easy thing that that person may have been trying to get into for years. It's such a free gift, right, being able to just connect people. Mm. So if, if, regardless if I sell my house or not, I don't really care about that. I call it my personal little high is when I'm able to say to somebody, oh, my gosh, I know somebody that can help you with that. Let me connect you. That's like my little sweet spot of my little hit of sugar every day. 
being able to do that. A lot of people get sidetracked in business in thinking that it's all about making the sale or the short-term transaction when it's a much more satisfying and profitable at a greater level, including finances, but bigger than that, of creating an environment of trust, of serving a family to make a transition. Uh, one of the most stressful things in people's lives is moving. And so for you to facilitate that, oh, yeah. to, to earn that trust, to establish a long-term connection, I'm sure the next time they move, you're the one that they want to call because of the care that you took, that long-term relationship building, and you're concerned about the things such as, do students play sports? What sports? Are you concerned about this? Do you like to garden? It sounds like you establish with your clients that they know that you truly care about them and their well-being, and then that leads to the success that you've achieved. I am a huge proponent of the servant leader. Well, you should always have that as your standard. And even in my group with my team, that's what I tell them. It's like, well, I'm a servant leader. Like, this is what you need to learn how to do because people love the experience. So our motto is that our experience that our clients have, regardless if they're a $90,000 transaction or a multi-million dollar transaction, that that person, when you come into contact with them, they feel like they've been at Nordstrom. They feel like they've been in the personal shopper area at sure. Nordstrom mm -hmm. and have that experience. But I also want my team members to feel like that when they work with me. Mm -hmm. So their leadership, the leader that they get treats them like that. They're my team. <laughs> And they're my family, but they're also treated as well or better as a client. Because at the end of the day, right, we're all responsible for what happens. Mm -hmm. And I have to take total responsibility for everything that happens. And so I want it at the end of the day where they have no desire to go anywhere else. Mm -hmm. And that's the same for my clientele is that you know, we treat them like they're royalty. Everybody loves that feeling. Right? right? Everybody loves to be, feel like they were treated like royalty. And that's what I want my clients to come away with, is that when you treat people right, the money comes. And it'd be nice if there were more business leaders who took that mentality. That's just exactly why I was happy to connect with you today in hearing from Eric Mitchell from Life Flip Media about the type of business leaders that he's connected me with are super impressive. And that's why I love highlighting businesses and business leaders like you who take on this type of mentality as they do business. There's a lot of stress involved with the purchase of a home or a large property. How do you help your clients stay resilient during this process? Absolutely. Part of my job is to put people at ease. So I am their concierge. That's what I say to them. I'm, I'm your concierge. So if you don't understand why something is happening, let's talk about it so you understand it. There's so many people, literally I've had people super highly educated, PhDs at the signing table that really didn't understand their lungs. They had no idea. Like, what's my payment going to be? So... That should not be done that way. I tell my clients, as you're talking to lenders, as you're talking to people, interview them. Make sure it's a good connection that they're going to teach you. I look for other partners that are the same as me. They're servant leaders. They are educators. They love to teach it. And so putting them at ease at the front part of learning how this process is going to look and what it's going to look like is, I think, the most important part. Because it's preparation, right, when something goes sideways. And I tell them, every single transaction, every single house that you look at is like a fingerprint. There's no two that are exactly alike. Each transaction, each deal, each offer, each home is like a fingerprint. And so if you can go into that process knowing that this is going to be a little bit different than it was last time, and let me learn how to teach you, people will tell you how to treat them and how to teach them. So making sure that on the front end, they're educated on these are the things so, that are going to be happening to you, either if it's a listing or a buyer. There's different things that they need to prepare for. And so doing that on the front end, preferably before we go shopping, is huge because that alleviates and it actually saves so much time. They're not spending time in houses they don't care about. I get my people at the point where they walk, drive by, and they go, nope, I'm out. And I'm like, all right, cool, next. It's like clockwork. The key is, I think, in the preparation in the beginning, that alleviates all your stress later. Mm -hmm. 
if you can teach them, this is what's going to be coming. This is an appraisal. This is an inspection report. It looks daunting. If not, let's break it down. So I think it's that teaching and preparing ahead of time that alleviates a lot of that stress. As you've faced personal or professional challenges in your life, what is your approach to bouncing back from adversity? When a challenge arises, how do you stay resilient? Wow, so I've had challenges. I was thinking about this before we spoke. I've overcome a big one that was basically adopting my children. It was a huge battle, actually, with the state of Oregon. And it took years to get through. And with that, I learned, literally, I'm going to be really honest, I, I prayed more than I've ever prayed in my entire life. I learned that if you want to know how to do something, you figure it out. Finding the people who will help you. In that case, basically, I was going against what you know, here they call it DHS, so Department of Human Services, hiding me for my daughter. And my son had already been adopted, and she was in care, kind of. And basically, it came down to, after about two years, it was that in, in the world of VHS, just because they're blood-related doesn't mean that they're related. So in order for my daughter to stay with my son, he would have had to have been in care. And come to find out, I found a piece of paper that he was in DHS care for 72 hours on paper when he was first born. I called my lawyer. She goes, that was back in the faxing days, mm -hmm. immediately, and did that. So finding the right person to represent me that could help me, I downloaded the DHS, their employee handbook. It happened to be online, and I went and I downloaded it and had it printed out. And that was like, I don't know, 300 pages or something like that, and found where they were wrong. I highlighted wow. it, wow. and I showed up at the office in Beaverton and said, I want to talk to you about this because I have it in writing where you've messed up. And anyway, they were like, we don't have to talk to you. And I said, well, I'm a taxpayer. I kind of own this hair. So I'm going to sit here until somebody sees me. I had to go to court three times. The state of Oregon said, no, we're going to come get her in three days. And I go, great. I'm going to have the news crew here. What time are you going to be here? That's how desperate I was. Every news station, I called them. Every radio station, I called them and said, here's what's happening. Can you help me? At the end of the day, you know, it was just one piece of paper. So sometimes the answer is very simple. You just have to find it in time and dig for it. If you want something to happen, you have to go and knock on doors. I mean, I was crying. I was devastated. It was actually probably the best weight loss product I've ever <laughs> was. I lost like 30 pounds. But at the end of the day, it taught me when anybody tells me no, or you can't do something, it's like game on. Let's mm. go. Let mm -hmm. me show you how many different ways you're wrong. I'm going to do it. It was a devastating time, and it was in my small town, right? So everybody took a side, and I lost a lot of friends and was very lonely for about two years. But at the end, when you're victorious, it was a bittersweet glory. But on the other side of the coin, it teaches you resilience. It teaches you that knocking on that door to that business, the cold call, wasn't a big deal that day. I literally, to this day, go back and I think, oh my gosh, well, I got through that, and that was the hardest thing I've ever done in my entire life. This isn't that hard. This is easier than that. I love that warrior spirit within you that saw it through. There was no give up there. Relationships were at stake, and... You did what you had to do to something done you, you knew was right. So I applaud that. And I love that warrior spirit within you and that tenacity to keep going even when it got difficult. And then the perspective it provided you afterward with lesser challenges that's valuable. Now that we've talked about some of those challenges that you faced, will you share some of the ultra satisfying aspects that you've experienced? You've talked about your passion for real estate and your love of the process and how it gives you that daily jolt of, of happiness and satisfaction. What are some things that you look back in your career that are just some of the most ultra satisfying experiences you've had where all that hard work and that tenacity and that determination and that servant leadership really impacted somebody. Recently, I opened my own business, my own office in December. So that was a big thing to own your own company. And so I had a really good friend who said, you know what, it's time for you to fly, go do this. 
he's got it. It was just that kind of support from another person in the industry that said, you can do this, Darcy. This is super simple. You got it. You're good. That made all that work come to fruit. And I would just say, any time that I bring people, it's their first time, you know, they bought a home and they've been renting forever or they never thought they could ever buy a house. There's, there's several clients I'm thinking of that were like, there's no way we'll ever be able to do it. And I'm like, I don't know. Let's, let's see if we can. Let's just get as far as we can. And when delivering keys to those people, that makes my day. I love working with every type of person, but being able to make a dream come true for somebody is pretty much the highest high you can ever get. It's a, such a great visual where you hand somebody the keys. You see them walk in for the first time, sign all the paperwork. How does that go? Because you take the time to understand what it means for them. So you get to share in that joy. You get to share in the dream. Somebody has a plan for real estate. You see it happening before it happens, and then you get to see it actually happen. I had a client. This is phenomenal what they did. We went and looked at houses, right? And they had their kids with them, which most people have their kids with them. And that's great because they were like, well, we want input from our kids if they want to be here or who's, who's, who's. And we went to this one house, and that kind of happened. The kids were like, yeah, I want this room. Yeah, I want that room. So we went back, we went through the process, and they never told the kids that they were moving. They never told them that they actually got that house. They kept it secret. And then on that day, when they came to get the keys, they rolled up with their kids, and the kids were like, why are we here? <laughs> and the mom and dad got to say, this is our house now. And sorry, <laughs> I'm almost like crying. It's so amazing to be able to do that for somebody and to watch that family, they were so grateful. For me, it was another day at work, but for them, it was life altering. It was life altering for those kids to see doing their budget for years, paying off their debt, watching their parents work really, really hard to be able to do this. That was building a foundation for those kids mm. and their future. I was just blown away, A, that they got away with keeping it secret that long, <laughs> and, and that they did all the hard work, and they really, really showed their kids, this is what it takes, right, right. to do this. So I thought that was just phenomenal. And their kids were like, their daughter was crying. Hmm. They had always lived in an apartment, and she was. She was just overcome by the surprise. And so that, I mean, I can't even describe what that feels like to see that, but it, it's life altering and it makes you very humble mm. in watching people achieve their dream. It's very, it's very humbling to watch that. And it was a phenomenal lesson to watch to actually build up other couples. So I used them as an example of like, oh my gosh, the, my other client did blah, 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 blah. And they were able to get out in like six to eight months. What can we do to help you? Very satisfying. Awesome. Darcy, I always end the show with six quick questions to help my listeners understand the why within my phenomenal guests. Are you willing to run through these six quick questions with me? Yes. All right. Who are you thankful for today? Well, I have to give credit to God. I'm very <laughs> thankful for that. I'm thankful for my parents who instilled in me a work ethic. And now that we've covered who you're thankful for, what are you thankful for today? Wow. I'm just thankful for the fact that I'm on your show. <laughs> that is incredible to me. And that I get to do what I love every single day of the week. I'm very, very grateful for the business that I have. How do you fuel the fire within you? It's listening to podcasts like yours. It's reading and then circling around me people who are better than me, who know more than me so that I can learn a little something from them and reading, tons of reading. What is one thing adversity taught you to value? Never, ever, ever give up. And what are you doing today you may have never thought you could? Running my own office, <laughs> my own company. That wasn't even on my radar until December. It basically was like a two weeks, like, here you go, go do that. And so every single day learning, how to run this to be a high-level establishment. 
And what will you do tomorrow that you may have never thought you could? Wow, that's an amazing question. Um, <laughs> you know what? I want to open six more of these. Darcy, how can people learn more about you and your work? I'm at DarcyEdwards.com, D-A-R-C-E-Y, Edwards.com, or EdwardsRealityTrust.com. Darcy, thank you so much for taking time out. It's been an honor and a pleasure. Thank you. Such a pleasure to share with Get Up Nation the passion and expertise of Darcy Edwards of Edwards Realty Trust. If you're moving to the Pacific Northwest, selling your home there, or seeking to invest in a property that meets your real estate goals, call Darcy and her team. They stand ready to serve, listening first, and then committing to help you make your ideal life a reality. Make sure you follow and subscribe to GetUpNationPodcast.com for more examples of passionate, powerful people overcoming adversity to create positive impact through personal, organizational, and societal resilience at GetUpNation.com.